Arius Piso's three true names in the Talmud. The Talmudic writers knew that most of the evidence about what the Pisos had done were in fact already given in the Roman works of the perpetrators themselves, in the form of jokes, allusions and boasts. So, the primary purpose of the information within the Talmud was for the edification of those who could understand what it was saying about this in comparison to evidence already found in the Roman works. In short, it was confirming evidence, supplemental and affirming. It was, as a famous commentator used to say the rest of the story. Realizing just how dangerous it was for the Jews to mention anything about Arius Piso, the creator of Jesus, it is quite amazing to find that they actually accomplished the task of giving his three true names in the Talmud by hiding these as best they could. So here they are, which confirms the examples of his names that are also found in the Roman works. 1. Arius in a fable of a visitor to Rav Yochanan, himself a literary alter ego of Yochanan ben Zakkai, appears the statement, Ariola Mebobel, which meant, a lion has come up from Babylon, i.e., Rome. Ari, was a shortened form of the Hebrew, Ayi, which meant, a lion, secretly, however, Ari was an allusion to Arius. And we have seen another insertion, in code, of the name, Ari, us, in the phrase, Arayan Ki Matai. In code this meant, Ari, of the Ayan, which stood for 70, the Septuagint, wrote Matthew. 2. Calpurnius. Although this does not appear in that form, Mene Purinuyot, meaning, types of punishment, is present in the phrase meaning, Seven types of punishment come to the world for seven capital transgressions. Notice the insertions of seven plus seven, they total fourteen. More complete statement is in a discussion of various plagues of insects where the phrase is, kolmine puroni, supposedly this means all types of calamities, but when the first two words sequence is reversed, there appears mine kolpornius, meaning the, min of Calpurnius. 3. Piso. Often this name is referred to secretly, by the switching of letters. We have located only one place where the name was openly slipped in, but supposedly pertaining to an earlier period and in another altogether different context. The story relates that, Pashon Ha, Gamal, Pashon the camel driver was using the property of his unnamed minor wife. She refused, challenged, his conduct during his absence. The court, which subjected him to two penalties, was placed in the time of the school of Shami, and of Hillel. This was about the year 1 CE by placing the fable in this period. It could later be argued that this Pishon, Pisson could not possibly be someone living 37 to 118 CE, years later. Yet to Hebrew scholars with inner circle knowledge, the term, camel, driver clearly would show whose name the writers had used in this story. If you are not already familiar with this subject in enough detail to understand what is being stated here, you will need to get a copy of, the True Authorship of the New Testament, by Abelard Rooklin. It may be obtained via Amazon. Regarding, Ari, as a shortened form of Ari, Lion, this brings to mind something that we find in Revelations 13, 2. In the statement, the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, the Greek word for leopard is also the same word that is used in Greek for, panther. And this, once one knows the true meanings of these things exposes a lot. More on this a little further in this article. By the way, the word is, pardalus, in Greek and it seems that the word may likewise have been synonymous with the word, lion, as one may see when one adds, leo, lion, leo pardalus. 
names for Jesus in the Talmud were actually allusions to Arius Piso. The various names in the Talmud which were supposedly applied to Jesus were in fact all allusions to Piso. That was because Piso was the focus of the Jewish resentment for what he and Rome had done to them. 1. Yeshu in the Talmud was supposedly a shortened form of the Greek Iasaus. That was the surface reason for which that name was created. And by medieval times it supposedly was an acrostic for Yemek Shemovi, Sichoro which mean, may his name and remembrances be erased. The true and original derivation for Yeshu, a reason secondary to its being a seeming shortened version of Iasaus, was because it totaled in Hebrew regular numbering 316. That is, Yod was 10, Shin was 300, and Vof was 6. More about this name will be forthcoming in future works. 2. Balaam, that is the second Balaam, is another name seemingly applied by the writers of the Talmud to Jesus, but in fact, instead to Piso. As usual, the idea originated in Piso's own writings. Balaam appeared in the New Testament in 2 Peter 2.15, Jude verse 11 feet and Revelation 2.14, each time the believers were chastised for following Balaam's doctrines, and Piso and his sons were teasing them that they were following Piso in the guise of Balaam. Hence, the Talmud attacks Piso under the name of Balaam. The nastiest story has Balaam raised from the dead by incantations, admit his punishment is boiling hot semen. Then the sinners of Israel are likewise raised and they admit their punishment is boiling hot excrement. The phrase, sinners of Israel, was inserted in place of the name of Yeshu after Catholic Church censorship deleted the name. But the fact the name Yeshu was originally used here, shows how far the Talmud writers dared go, thinking this would be relatively safe so long as they did not use obvious references to Piso. A Kalmar tale involving Balaam contains numbers which in three different ways secretly allude to Piso in Greek. The tale asks how old was Balaam the lame when he was killed by Phineas the robber. Balaam is lame as an allusion to Paterculus, father lame, Piso's maternal great-grandfather who originated the idea for what eventually became the Gospel of Mark. The Talmud asks whether Balaam was 33 or 34 years old when he was killed. It says men of blood and deceit shall not live out half of the days. Because normal life, for aristocrats then extended to 70 years of age, he would have been less than 35. The answer then given was that he was 33 when he was killed. An interesting punishment for Balaam Piso. Perhaps this is an indication that his sexual escapades got the best of him by having given him a sexually transmitted disease that caused him painful discharges. Herford P. 67-69, Gitten 56b, 57a. Herford page 72, San. 106b. Balaam, being synonymous with Jesus, died at 33 like Jesus did. And Jesus, died at 33 like Alexander the Great did. Alexander the Great being an ancestor of Arius Piso. And Arius too, was Balaam the lame as he was. 1. Lamed. Because of the fall from his horse, and 2. As he likewise carried the inherited name of Marcus, as his ancestors did. 3. Yeshu ben Pantiri, or Pandira, because in Hebrew, T, and, D, could interchange. The panther was holy to Bacchus. This was the Latin form of the Greek Dionysius, the god of the vine, or of vine. Piso used the variant name Bassus, and in fact under the name Quadratus, 
Bassus his death is recorded in 118 CE. And Jesus, in John 15 1 said, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman vinedresser, hence, the panther and other felines, the cat, the kitten, the puss, the leopard, have all been used as allusions to Piso. They perhaps erred in placing the name Yeshu before it, making it easy for the church senses to later notice and delete. There will be more information about this made available at a later date and or in other places. See information about Ben Pantera, as meaning, son of mother, i.e., he, Arius, had the same name, except in the masculine form, as his mother, Aria. And so by calling or alluding to Jesus as Ben Pantera, the Jews could point to his name or confirm it as Arius by the use of this particular method without risking the death of thousands of Jews by the royals who happened to be descendants of Arius Piso and his close relatives. 4. Ben Satada. This is the most difficult of the Talmudic names of Jesus, really of Piso, to decipher. But Satada seems to be a disguised serata which meant either, son of a tattooer, or, an expert at tattooing. In changing serata to Satada, a similar code process was followed as in disguising Haman as Chinam. Here the, R, was changed to, D, because the Hebrew letters had similar appearance, and then the, T, to, D, because being similar in sounding letters were changed in sequence. Hence Sarata could be disguised as Satada. Although Sarata meant literally a tattooer, it could also figuratively mean a scribbler or writer. Hence Piso. A Talmudic statement says that Ben Stada is Ben Pandira, and so, just another name for the same person being spoken of. However, to me, Satada, by use of the newly discovered, royal language, would produce, Satanas, which is the Greek spelling of, Satan, which for the Jews meant, the hater, and, the accuser. This seems a most appropriate name for Jesus since. Jesus, really was only representative of Piso, and Piso had been calling the Jews, of the devil. So, it makes sense that they would use Satada, as a secret name for Piso, Jesus as a disguised Satan, so that they could rail back at him in literature and say, if we are of the devil, then you are the devil, Satan, incarnate or descended from. In the royal language, the D, would become, N, to render Satanas, in Greek by use of the equivalent letters in Hebrew. Lauterbach Jacob. In Jewish expressions on Jesus, p. page 45-46. Note that ancient writers would keep a copy of their original works scribbled or written upon hides or animal skins. A cache of such examples were found in caves occupied by the Jews during the war with the Romans. Herford, p. 37. 5. Mamza. The Talmud speaks of a certain man, Ishploni, as a Mamza, which supposedly meant one of illegitimate birth. The problem is that one who never existed cannot have been of any, real, birth at all. Therefore, one must search in the word Mamza for alternative meanings. As the normal pattern, when one finds them, they point directly at Piso. Herford P. Midrash Yeb 4, 13. Yeb Gemara 49b. More on this name for Piso, Jesus later.